Hey, y'all. Welcome back. Here we are. How is everybody doing? Thank you so much for tuning in, Internet. This is uh, uh, Skybound Harbor House. I'm Hector Navarro, and we're streaming right now on twitch.tv slash gamma ray underscore TV. This is awesome. We're here at San Diego Comic-Con, and we have a fantastic set of guests uh, on this couch right now and a great little conversation we're about to get into. So why don't we go down <laughs> this couch? We got a nice squeaky couch. Yes. The panel that we're talking about right now for the next, we got you guys for the next hour is people of color in comics. That's what, what we got. How many? 30 minutes. Oh, we got for the next 30 minutes? Oh, Hell yeah. Oh, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. oh, my gosh. <laughs> let me, we let better me talk try. real fast. Yeah, let me, right, let me right. just, uh, my point, my thesis on America Chavez. Really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the wonderful Danny Fernandez is here. Oh, yay. We have the fantastic Erica Ishii down on the couch. You just saw with the Maltons, the lovely Maltons. Hello. And we have comic book writer Brandon Thomas is here. Brandon, yay. how you doing? You are known for Skybound's Horizon. Yes. In case people haven't Am read, I? I haven't finished it yet. I haven't read all of it yet. Should it's in good. Yes. In case <laughs> you're familiar with the book, I think it has one of the best premises for a sci-fi comic. Just hit us with that real quick, and then tell us a little bit about the comic. Okay. Cool. So, Horizon is essentially uh, it, it takes place. Now, uh, Earth is kind of like a, a burned out wasteland. And so we've gone out into space to find a, a new planet to take over and colonize because yeah. we've ruined this one already. Yeah. So That's what happens what is exactly it's what we do better than anyone else. So the aliens find out about our interest in their planet and they come to Earth to basically trap us on our dying world. To keep us so that we to can't keep escape. us here. Yes. To That's sabotage good. Earth's escape attempts. There is a lot that this book covers. Thank you. There is a lot that there's a lot of themes and a lot of uh, messages in the book, and um, a, and there is a fantastic villain character that I want to talk about in a little talk bit. Talk about Lincoln. Talking about Lincoln, my favorite okay. character in the book. We'll talk about Lincoln, my favorite. One of mine too. But um, but let's get into it just with um, uh, just sort of the overall uh, broad topic of people in, people of color in comics, and kind of go down the line. And as a fan, or in Brandon's case, as a creator, sort of what is it like to be a fan of comics in this world, being a p person of color, and what's what's like cool about it, Danny? Well, I feel like uh, growing up, I didn't really see a lot of superheroes that looked like me. Sure. Still, not too many that look like me. I would say my top two would probably be like America Chavez uh, and uh, Jessica um, Cruz. Jessica Cruz, Green Lantern. Um, that's right. Yeah, which I'm like, hey, if you're gonna cast, I mean, I just like need to get my man. <laughs> Call <in>. her. Hey, <laughs> give me a shot. Do you know they're available? Um, <laughs> they're at, at Comic Con. They're giving out her little Lego minifig. Oh, at the really? DC booth of Jessica okay. Cruz. And really? People freaking out about it. It's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, yeah, I guess it's so funny. Anytime that anyone asks me like who my favorite superhero was growing up, I always say Selena. <laughs> Good answer. Because, I mean, she had costumes. Okay, <laughs> she came out. She like you know Look, she had a wardrobe. There's she bat was Ky Kyle. Kyle. Right? Wait, Selena. Oh, Selena. Selena, Selena. 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 Okay, yeah. I'm like, yeah. Selena. Okay, yeah. okay, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Uh, and, and, um, <laughs> yeah, she Wonder Woman, but it was so, <laughs> it's so fascinating. So it was really hard finding characters, and so I think a lot of times, I, I don't know if this was the case for you as well, but I felt like I gravitated towards characters like Spider-Man or like yes. ones that were completely costumed because anyone could live under there. Sure. Um, and it was so fascinating. I was on a panel last year with uh, Juan Manuel Roca, who does Comics on Comics, which is a great panel that they have here every year, and, and we were talking about our favorite Star Wars characters and he said Darth Vader and I was yeah. like oh so you're dark like you're into it he's like no it was just like that was the only character that I could picture <laughs> myself anyone could be under that helmet because here's the thing about Darth Vader for that whole first movie he's James Earl Jones he's James Earl yeah. he's a black guy <laughs> like, right. Darth Vader right. he's black <laughs> it wasn't until the second movie where they were like he's a white man but yeah he's a, he's a, are you sure <laughs> yeah it doesn't sound like he's a white a, it's, man. it's Mufasa he's James Earl Jones yeah. but this was a really fascinating time that we have right now and I'm really excited because I have a young niece and she's two years old and I'm like I'm so yeah. excited for her and of course, me being like the nerdy aunt, I'm like getting her in all of the things. That's how you do it. Uh, a lot of and mainstream characters, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where she even in even in, in things like Coco or Moana and just like other areas oh of God. media. I mean, I I wept during, bo during both of those. But like the second I saw Moana, I just started crying um, because I'm like, even someone that looks you know semi like like my niece and I is, is mm -hmm. so exciting. But anyways, to answer your question, yeah, I felt like a lot of times I related to characters that I could put put myself into. Sure. Yeah. It helps to see that kind of representation in the, you know, a character, fictional or otherwise. Like in the case of Selena, we got that great biopic 
right? We got we got uh, sure. we got uh, Edward James Olmos saying things yes. as her father saying like it's exhausting to be a Mexican American. You got to know about Christina and Oprah, like those <laughs> kinds of you know, those nice little pieces. Into, and as a kid, I related to that. Yeah, Brandon, what's it like for you to be a fan of comics, kind of growing oh, up, wow. and then go, now coming into the world of comics as a writer and a creator? And still, you know, you're, you're being a person of color. What has that experience been like? It's, it's, been, um, it's been incredible. One of the things that I was uh, really struck by pretty, pretty quickly when I started uh, writing professionally is once you get on the, uh, you know, the other side of the table, sure. uh, the way that people kind of come up to you changes. So I would get a lot of, you know, like, young black male like writer aspiring writers kids who were my age or when i got into comics i was 12 13 years old so yeah. kids that age like coming up to me and like i didn't even know black people wrote comics <laughs> so <laughs> you, you did know, this oh cool yeah i know i know so it, it's been a really um you know i i just tr i try to take it I try to take it seriously and, and because I know that I've, I've had enough people that looked like me come sure. up to me and they're like, wow, I didn't even know black. I, th I didn't wow. even know this was something that, that we did. Cool, man. So it's some um, it's chat earlier said that's uh, Mo Mar Hernandez says, what about Blade? Spawn, hello, 1990s. Yes. Yeah, 1990s was a good time. There was some good stuff going on. <laughs> Spawn number one was one of the very first comics I ever read. Wow. Ever. Wow. Yeah, so I came in the comics with the birth of Image Comics. Oh, and that was So I came in change. May 1992, and that was one of the first comics that I read. And I was like, this is amazing. And yeah. then I became like the biggest Image Comics fanboy that yeah. anyone has ever seen. And now I get to write comics with the little image eye on. Isn't that cool? Awesome. Oh, wow. I know, that's so cool. Did you watch the spicy HBO uh, anime? Yeah, I of course. Well, yeah. some of us had to like sneak out to like no. <laughs> It was on late at night. My parents didn't know what I was watching. Yeah. <laughs> it was like me, my parents yeah. with anime. They're like, oh, it's just cartoon. I know. Like, that's yeah. what you think. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they, get, they get freaky dicky sometimes. They get a little, they get violent. That's true. But that Spawn cartoon was, was really cool. It yeah. It was yeah. cool because yeah. it was an adult, you know, and that it was it And it was, was Keith David. Yeah. And it's yeah. Like Keith David doing the voice. And it's like, that guy's black. I can tell. I know he is. <laughs> oh, Keith David also did Gargoyles. Oh, yeah. yeah. Goliath. So, Goliath. To me, yeah. Goliath. Also, yes. like anything yeah. that was not specifically, you know, peach Dude, colored human. This is, like a, a, this is a fascinating conversation. Yeah. There was an article that came out a couple years ago where I think, the, I think the writer of the article was black and was saying, like, when he was a kid, there were so many people in his group of friends that, that knew, like, Bugs Bunny was black or SpongeBob was black. Like, all of these characters that aren't. Human, Piccolo. right? The, yeah, yeah, Piccolo. Piccolo was black. Piccolo, Piccolo from Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, like, you're talking about, talking about Panthro. Yeah, Panthro. He's the yeah. black guy. Uh, yeah, like yeah. Panthro. Yeah. It's so interesting. Uh -huh. That's so funny. Yeah. And, yeah. Any, and you go, again, you go to the voice actor, and it's like, well, who's doing and the voice? And it's true. And now my, my yeah. friend who's, who's black is the new Panthro. Ooh. For, yeah. And so, like, they obviously of think of him as black. Of awesome. and, in, and in some iterations, Shredder is also a black guy because he was voiced yeah. by the great James Avery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The late, yep. great James Avery. Sonic 2 by... Sonic, uh, by Julia White. Yeah, Julia White. That's so yep. funny. That's so funny. Oh, I, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and also, I don't know, that's a discussion that, back for there, that... one. There is, yeah. there is a discussion uh, in, in voice acting a lot about, you know, uh, sure. diversity in casting and mm -hmm. what that means and, and, you know... I talked a little bit to Phil Lamar about that, who played Jack, who's Jack. Yeah, Samurai he's Jack. Samurai Jack, and, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was saying, like, when he got cast in that role... Even then, in the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s, it wasn't the type of conversations that are happening today. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, he's like, look, man, like, I'm a black guy that got this role. Like, it's, you know, there was, there was still... I'm going to... Yeah. I, I definitely give him a pass because, you know, <laughs> he, he's Phil Lamar. And also, yeah, yeah. like, there, there are a lot of times where black voice actors will get pigeonholed into doing black roles right, and everything. Right, So, yeah. to be able to break out. Because ideally, it would be just race agnostic and anybody could go for anything. Right. It's not exactly that way now. Yeah. But I'm seeing, starting to see a lot more uh, voiceover breakdowns that say, like, well, we're specifically looking for Latina right. or good. black or yeah. Asian, yeah. which is yeah. great. Agree, yeah. Erica, what's yeah. your experience been like as a fan? Kind of, What stuff did you love in the comics world or just in general? So uh, the first comic that I ever read that I uh, actually learned to read with was Stan Sakai's uh, Usagi oh, Yojimbo. So good. Which is uh, a, about feudal Japan only populated by 
anthropomorphic animals. Mm -hmm. So it was, you know, Japanese uh, culture, and he's Japanese American. So you know, I I grew up with with the Japanese American comics creator, yeah. you know, being like one of my first people that I ever read, uh, and you know, with Japanese culture being at the forefront of it. And you know, he had a crossover with Ninja Turtles, and Ninja Turtles, you know. Uh, a that's Splinter how is Japanese. That's how I learned who Usagi Yojimbo was. Right, yeah, and then Usagi, yeah. yeah. And, and so, you know, there there was some presence there. And I remember my mom getting me, like, one of those, like, I can read, uh, you know, Dorling Kindersley books about Jubilee's origin story. So yeah. everybody gets one X-Men. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody's that's got true. one X-Men that's like, it's true. That's like me. Right. That's like yeah. me. And, and I for had me, it was Sunspot. Jubilee. Yep. Yeah, everybody got an X-Men. Right? Yeah, and yeah. and that, that was really cool. Um <laughs> I have a friend who does a stand-up routine about uh, saying that um, for for being you know an allegory for uh, you know the civil rights movement, uh, X Men didn't exactly start out very diverse. Oh no, no. But but then it did, and now yeah. everybody has an X Men that they can dress up as, mm -hmm. which I, and I dressed up as Jubilee. So I I feel like if you knew where to look, there were a lot of, um, and especially in indie comics, um, places where you could find diversity, uh, and that was and that was really nice because. But yeah, for for the big two, I, I know growing up there weren't as many uh, diverse faces, um, you know, writing and and drawing or in the in comics the themselves. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I feel like these days, you know, they they've made it such a great effort. You know, they, they, we had a Chinese Superman, yeah. and and a Chinese Hulk, mm -hmm. and and that's incredible to me. A, a Chinese like Spider Woman, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Mm -hmm. Some great characters it, it, too. Blows yeah. my mind. And going off of that, there's some great comments in the chat. Welsh Andy T yeah. says, I think comics have been the most diverse form of entertainment for the longest time. That's great. That's fantastic. And here's a great question from Welsh Andy T. Do you think it's important for writers, particularly when it comes to movies, to create new diverse characters, not just random race or gender switches of existing characters? <laughs> question mark. That's a great conversation. I think the answer is both. And I think yes. for a lot of yeah. reasons. I think that it's incredibly important to create new characters in comic books especially, mm. and it would be great if those comics are then adapted into movies and TV shows and different things, but for all across the board, it's really important for creators to tell different kinds of stories about different kinds of people, because yeah. you just get better stories, period. It's also important behind the scenes for writers, producers, directors, artists, people making these things to also have different backgrounds again so you get authenticity and you get more you know to get different kinds of stories we wouldn't have gotten creed if it wasn't for Ryan Coogler with his experience having a pitch for the son of Apollo Creed and he took it to Sylvester Stallone. He's like, here's my idea. And then they ran with it. And it's my favorite Rocky movie. And it's, you know, like we wouldn't have gotten that if he didn't have that background and if he wasn't, a, or it, Black Panther with his Oakland, you know, upbringing. Yeah. Uh -huh. like, We've had this discussion yeah. <laughs> about how um, while it is important to create new characters, yes. and, and this is something that comes up on Twitter a lot. It's like, yeah, it's great. Like, go out and create your own character. Absolutely, you should do that. But there also is something so powerful about having these characters that everybody grew up with and that the world knows uh -huh. to be representative of other cultures as well, to like suddenly have like a young black woman be Iron Man and everybody knows who Iron Man is and suddenly yeah. it's a young black woman. Uh, and that's so powerful to, to have to have those race and gender uh, swaps for these well-known properties. And, and I feel like there's no reason that it shouldn't be, that it shouldn't happen, because something like if we go specifically back to Spider-Man with Miles Morales, like Let's I was saying, right yeah. Yeah. Like I was saying uh -huh. anyone could be, anyone could exist under that mask. Yes. And so the excuses of, well, it has to be this person, it's like, no, right. also these superheroes are not immortal, some of them. They have to die, They ha and, but you want the mantle to live on. You want their legacy to live on, and why not have it live on in a young person of color that might represent more of the population or a different culture or perspective? I do want to go back to, I think it's so important, though, that uh, a lot of these characters are also at least have brown writers involved sure. or you know people of people of color involved in the making of them because then i think that is when it kind of comes across as not authentic right. yeah i think it's it's important it's also important that uh you know the the buy in for an established character is a little it's a little lower 
you know, than it is for a new character. So yeah. there are some people that are always looking for new things. They're always looking at indie comics and indie creators to kind of lead the way. What new things are people talking about? What kinds of stories? But there is a large part of the marketplace that really only wants Spider-Man or Batman. Sure. You know, and, there, and there's nothing wrong with that. And so... You know, doing these kind of gender race swaps, they're a way of kind of inserting new characters and new perspectives into these kind of old frames that people are more likely to actually buy and yeah. enjoy. So, you know, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm proud of the, the type of things that we've done uh, with Horizon as far as diverse characters. Yeah. But there are, there are certain people that just are not into indie comics. Yep. And so you shouldn't have to go specifically to indie comics to get diversity. Like yeah. you should be able to look at the Marvel Universe and the DC Universe and see something that looks more like the world that you live in right now. So that's why we get characters like Kamala Khan, Jessica yeah. Cruz, yeah. Miles Morales. And the, these are all uh, attempts to kind of inject different perspectives into these universes. Absolutely. And everyone knows that, you know, Tony Stark is going to come back. You know, yeah. Peter yeah. Parker is not going away. Captain but Steve Rock why can't come back. Exactly, yeah. but why can't we have, we, I think we're, we're learning and we're proving that you can have a superhero universe that has, you know, two characters that are kind of like Iron Man. Not yeah. exactly Iron Man, but there is a place for Tony Stark and Riri Williams to both exist in the Marvel Universe. I did want to say to like, people that got upset about Riri taking the mantle, it's like what, how would Tony Stark feel? Like, yeah. It's so funny that you are speaking for him. Yeah. And if you, no, but I'm serious. It's, yeah. it's really fascinating to me when people are so obsessed with superheroes and superhero culture and yet they don't act like heroes themselves. Right. Um, and you attack the you attack these people that are taking up this mantle or, or you know, be, becoming in their own. They're becoming in the and their own characters. And it's just like, yeah, but how would he feel? Because yeah. he is a mentor. And would, he is Would Steve a Rogers be mad at his friend Sam Wilson being captain? Like, would yeah. he be like, you're not yeah. cap? No. Right. right. He, he would be like, death awesome. And, no. And no. <laughs> right. That to me is so weird that, like, you can't even, you're doing a disservice to your own, your superhero would be ashamed of you. Yeah. Uh, for acting yeah. that way. And it's I'm not talking about y'all because I know y'all out there don't do that. <laughs> right. Y'all don't right. write people. But, uh, <laughs> and, but, but what I be saw. Be respectful. Yeah, be respectful. <laughs> what I saw in the backlash, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Your character wouldn't act like that. Right. You yeah. know, and, and, and I, I feel like there's such a disconnect from that uh, yeah, for is. people that are obsessed and in love with these superheroes. And yet, given, when given the opportunity to be a hero, you're, you're not. That's right. Danny, that's connected to a lot of things. That's, the, you know, that's fan culture right now. There's lots of discussions about how to be a good fan. And and how people are being a bad fan. It's all kind of connected, and, and there's a bunch of stuff that, that's linked up with that. Um, but there's some great comments happening in the chat right now. Uh, I think that, um, uh, look at this great comment from Welsh Andy T. says, Miles Morales is, a fant is fantastic. He's a new Spider-Man, though, yeah. with his own background, universe, and so on, rather than just like a Peter Parker who's Mexican for the version of, we have a Mexican, you know, yeah. Peter Parker. And the tricky thing about, especially those big universes, the big Marvel and the big DC thing, is that, and even to an extension, my favorite series of all time, the Skybound recently wrapped Invincible series. Invincible oh. went from 2003 to, to just 2018, just this year. But even in that span, characters didn't age quite in real time. They still, uh -huh. you know, years passed. But it's like Spy Superman was invented in 1938. And even though Superman is a long-lived character, we still have stories with Lois Lane, Perry White, Jimmy Olsen. Those characters should be long dead. Like those, you know, <laughs> but comics aren't real time. So when right. you freeze these characters in time, characters in worlds from 1938 or the 60s with all the Marvel heroes they were not as concerned with representing the real world. And the demographic of our world today is different. So if we keep going back to that well, right. that essentially tell these same stories, but now in a movie version, a TV version, whatever, whatever, you're going to run into these problems where most of the characters are white and are not, again, fully embracing the diversity that we have in the world. So these kinds of changes need to be made. And it's like, if you just know the history of, well, why are they making that change? Well, because this is from 1938, gang. Like, we, we right. can't keep, you know. And it's, it's not unique to comics, really. Right. But stories do need to evolve with the society. And that, oh whether it's <laughs> just different values or different kinds of humor or different representation of a population or more accurate representation of a population, you have to allow your stories to evolve because that is how stories go. 
Right. Yeah. Speaking that of is characters, what the story is. Yeah. That's what the story is. We are running out of time. <laughs> this is how fast this thing yeah, went. That but was I like, to, like how long? Oh, yes. Yeah, two minutes. But I really wanted to mention this because my favorite character from uh, Brandon's series, Horizon, is Lincoln. Yes. Who is the main villain? He is. Antagonist? Yes. Uh, he, and he is a black man. Yeah. And I just want you to sort of tell us a little bit about him and okay. kind of how the development, because I, I, basically my question was, and I think this is sometimes something people talk about today, is can a character of color be evil? Are we okay with that? And I say yes. I say that's, I, my favorite character in Star Trek is Khan, you know, and he's played by Ricardo Montalban. Like that, I, I love that sort of thing. And I think if we don't allow different types of, of, of people to play villains, you're kind of limiting some of that as well. But talk yes. a little bit about Lincoln. Well, Lincoln uh, specifically, I wanted just, you know, playing off what you're saying, um, people of color also need to be three-dimensional. They need to be real characters. Um, I, I think we sometimes we get into this habit where there are so few like great create you know characters of color that they all turn into kind of like saints yeah <laughs> you know they're perfect people right which is you yeah. know that that's not real that's not reality so i wanted lincoln to be you know a, a villainous character but that's not everything about him everything about him is not how you see him and when we peel back some of the layers and the and the volume you haven't read yet yeah <laughs> see that you'll get his like secret origin yeah but it's, you know it's very important to me to be able to show that and lincoln also has the afro that i wish i could grow it's yeah. gorgeous <laughs> it's gorgeous so i mean he, not only uh, is he ripped and you know we all wish we were super ripped but that that dude's hair is beautiful yeah he <laughs> has a beautiful afro <laughs> i wish i could grow that one. can you tell us uh what else you're working on some secret stuff for Skybound. Ooh. Okay. So okay. Maybe this time next year we'll be able to talk a little more, a little bit more about that. But uh, okay, we're, we're going to some Skybound stuff. Gonna, uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm also writing a book called uh, Noble, okay. which features a black male superhero. It's a, a brand new universe called Catalyst Prime that's populated by people of color and created by people of color. So Very cool. So you mean it's like the real cool. world? Yes. That sounds dope. It's like reality it's right like now. Real, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. All right. Erica, what else are you going to be doing at the con? Um, I'm going to be uh, doing Geek and Sundry panels and meetups at the Nerdist House. I'm going to be at the Nerdist House a lot. And then uh, at 10 a.m. on twitch.tv slash geek and sundry. Um, on Saturday, I'm going to be streaming live from the Tomb Raider activation. We're interviewing Lara Croft herself, Camila Luddington, and a lot of crazy surprises. Don't miss it. Also, really quick, thank you so much to, uh, I saw a lot of tiny potatoes in the chat, and everybody who's in there, uh, having good discussion yeah, uh, about a topic that can be controversial. So thank you for your great input. We really appreciate you. Yeah. Danny, what are you doing for the rest of the con? Where oh, I posted on my Twitter my schedule. There it is. is at, I'm oh, yeah. At, that's Go just to Twitter. E at yeah. Ms. Danny Fr it's M S D A N I F E R N A. I copied you, did the exact same thing. I, I know, like, and I smart. retweeted for it. Well, thank you so I'm much. trying to, put, thank you know, you so I want much. my friends to get seen too. But yeah, I will also be at Nerdist House actually after this. I'm hosting a live show there. Yeah. Um, and then I have my, my con schedule up. There we go. Brandon, I forgot to ask, where can people find you online? Are you in, you're on Twitter. Where are yes, you at? Yes, I'm on Twitter. My handle is brights247. Okay. So that's B-W-R-I-T-E-S, 247. I'm also on Instagram, same handle. And uh, I have a blog that I need to update at uh, <laughs> fictionhouse.wordpress.com. All right. And I'm on Facebook, go. too. And you guys can stay tuned to more Gamma Ray stuff. I'm also going to be... Like Erica, she did this at uh, Nerdist House Nerdist. happening uh, for the whole weekend. And also be sure to check out uh, twitch.tv slash hyperrpg because there's a ton of stuff that's happening over at Hyper RPG. They're streaming stuff and they're going to different events and everything. And we're going to have a lot of like recaps for all the news that's happening at Comic-Con. I'm walking around. I'm getting texted like, Clone Wars is coming back. I'm like, oh. Yeah, oh, I know. Oh, I just saw that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. So, guys, stay tuned. And we'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.